Happy New Year! Let's kick off this year with lots of great content. In today's video, I'm going to show you 5 perfectly legit ways to grow well with 0% tax in Canada, so make sure you stick around. Hey, welcome back. My name is Thomas C. Chen. We have the most 5 star Google reviews in life insurance, Vancouver, and retirement planning. So starting this year, if you want to know more about tax-free wealth for your retirement and to protect you and your family using solutions that Canadian banks don't want you to know about, make sure you hit the subscribe button below and enjoy what I have for you. There's always a say, it's not how much you make, it's how much that you can keep. This is especially true when we invest in Canada because CLA will always come in and ask for the share when you make a profit on the investment. And let me show you two scenarios. In the first scenario, Henry will put $10,000 a year for the next 15 years with a 10% rate of return per year. Then after 15 years, he will have around $350,000 saved. And on the other hand, where we have Tom doing the exact same saving, but this time, Every year when you make a profit, CLA will tax you at 30%. So instead of getting a $1,000 profit in the first year, you only get $700 as profit, and you will get only $270,000 after 15 years. That means $80,000 goes to the CLA's pockets. So I want to share 5 strategies and tools that can help you grow your saving with 0% tax so you don't have to be Tom in my second scenario. The first strategy is really simple and straightforward, and you probably heard of it before, is to max out your tax-free savings account or known as TFSA. The tax-free savings account was first offered in 2009 as a way for Canadian adults to set money aside tax-free. Within a tax-free saving, you can invest in stock market or you can put it aside in the savings account depending on your goal and risk tolerance, and those savings can grow tax-free throughout your lifetime. This means all interest, dividends, and capital gain earned in your tax-free saving are tax-free when withdrawn. And because you earn 100% of the profit, that will make the compounding growth very powerful. For example, if we save $6,000 a year for the next 30 years with a 10% rate of return per year, then you will have $1.08 million saved. And because tax-free saving is not a taxable income, so you do not need to pay any taxes and also it won't affect your retirement benefit such as the OA security. Maximizing your tax-free savings potential is the easiest way to ensure your money is always working for you. And the great thing is, if you forgot to contribute last year, the room can be carried forward. The best way is by enabling an automatic deposit into your account like putting a $500 a month automatically so you just set it and forget it. And remember, the earlier you contribute, the more time your investment have to grow. The two downsides that I found about tax-free saving is one, that you have a limit each year to how much you can contribute to your tax-free saving. And it's important that you stay within your contribution room, otherwise you'll be taxed on that excess amount. And this can be varied depending on how many years you stay in Canada. And if you don't know what your limit is, log into your CLA account online to check it. The other slight disadvantage is because tax-free saving is too flexible. So sometimes when you need the money to go for a trip or needed to pay down the credit card bill, it will be always the first pocket to reach in. According to the CRA statistics, the average saving inside of the tax-free saving is around $20,000. That's only a quarter of the max saving that you can put in. Alright, let's move on to the next strategy which is to utilize your principal residence. We all know that real estate is a very crucial part in our asset portfolio. The return is quite stable and promising, and in the long run, it breeds inflation. You can rent it out to collect additional income, or you can flip it for the appreciation. When you sell your home, there's a good chance you'll get more than what you pay for it. Therefore, taxes in real estate is one of the most profitable avenues for CLA. If your investment property is worth more when you bought it, the government requires you to pay the capital gain tax on the increase in value. Your principal residence, however, is a special exception. According to the Income Tax Act, you can designate one property as your principal residence in any given year. Your principal residence has to be something you can actually live in, not a shed, storage container, or vehicle. It can be, however, 
a cottage, a house, condo, apartment in a duplex, or building a trailer, a mobile home, or even a houseboat. Therefore, say you bought a house with $500,000 and after 30 years, when you decide to sell to downsize it, it grew to $1.5 million. Normally, that $1 million profit needs to be taxed. But because it's your principal residence, it's completely tax-free. And now you can use it for retirement. The third tax-free strategy is to use eligible dividend income from the blue chip stock portfolio. First, let's understand what is dividend first. Think of dividend as a bonus given out by big companies every quarter or every year. When you buy a certain stock, say Royal Bank, you become the shareholder of Royal Bank. So when Royal Bank makes money, they will pay you a bonus. Now, Royal Bank is paying 1.3 to you every three months per unit you have. Say you have a thousand shares, then you get paid 50 to 80 dollars per year. And investors like dividend because even when the stock price goes down, they still pay the similar dividend return. All right, back to the topic. Since dividend is extra profit, isn't it taxable then? Yes, dividends are counted as investment income and are generally taxed accordingly, depending on your tax bracket. However, when we look closer, there's one instance when we don't have to pay tax even when we have dividend income. That's right. It's possible for Canadians to receive around $50,000 dividend income and no need to pay any tax. Right now, I'm using British Columbia as an example. As you can see here, if your sole income is dividend income, pretty much you don't have to pay any tax up to $53,000. i am not going to talk too much detail on what's eligible or non-eligible. Just think of dividend paid by big blue ship companies as eligible dividend, therefore they are eligible for extra tax credit. Again, you need to fulfill two criteria to max out this strategy. One is dividend income must be your sole income, meaning no work income, no other investment income, no money in your RSP. The other one depending on what province you're in. As you can see, if you live in BC, Ontario, then you don't have to pay any investment tax. But when you live in Nova Scotia or like Quebec, then you have to pay 10% tax on the same $50,000 dividend income. So make sure you talk to your accountant for that. Hey, sorry for the interruption, but I got a special announcement for you. I will be hosting a live webinar next month where I'm going to talk about tax efficient strategy, what can we do during this market downturn, and how to boost your wealth this year. So many goodies here that you don't want to miss it. There should be a link below where you can check out the details, and I only offer it to the first 100 people. So first come, first serve base. Make sure to check it out. All right, back to the video. But what if I max out my tax free saving? I don't plan to sell my principal residence, and I have other income, so relying only on dividend income doesn't work for me. Well, not to worry, because the next strategy is to use a life insurance policy. But wait a second, isn't life insurance a monthly expenses that give you beneficiary a lump sum payment after you die? That's right. However, on top of that, when we structure properly, life insurance can provide tax shelter growth and a tax-free income as well. This usually involved with a permanent life insurance plan with savings in there, like a universal life insurance or a whole life insurance. Now, after you see a decent size of saving in there, you can choose to take it out, which might trick a tax, or you can choose to borrow against it. And unlike a bank loan or credit card which requires credit or income check, borrowing money from your life insurance policy is a contractual guarantee meaning they have to lend it to you and you do not need to explain what you'll be using the money for. The money can be used for anything from bills to vacations to fund your kid's college or a financial emergency. And since this is a loan which is not considered as taxable income, there is no tax involved. Sure, because it's a loan, there's interest involved, but the best part is you can control when you pay back the loan or the interest payment. So in theory, you can delay everything until the day that you die. And upon death, any outstanding loan balance, including any accumulated interest, is deducted from the death benefits, with the remaining balance payout out tax-free to your beneficiary. So therefore, the entire process is 100% tax-free. This is very common to people who is a business owner or Canadians who max out their tax-free saving and have multiple real estates. They can enjoy the tax shelter growth, access the saving when there's emergency or during the market's downtime, and provide enough reserve to pay for the final tax bill should one pass away. If you're a small business owner, 
this one is for you. When you've created a very successful practice, client and staff will no longer be the top concern, but now taxes and succession are the top priority. What happens when you sell your business to someone else? Just like any other asset, CLA will come in and tax you at the profit. Say John runs a chiropractor business and now he wants to let it go and sell it to someone else. And based on the fair market value, his business is now worth a million dollars. Because he starts off with nothing, so his capital gain will be the full one million dollars and half of that, which is $500,000, will be taxed. And therefore, he needs to pay around $250,000 for his sale. However, there is something called the Lifetime Capital Gain Exception or LCGE, which allows Canadians incorporated small business owners to claim a deduction when selling the shares of the corporation that can effectively eliminate the taxes realized on the sale of the business. As mentioned previously, capital gains can include profits from the sale of a property, but it can also include business shares, stocks, and mutual funds. LCGE allows you to keep the profit from qualifying sales up to $913,000 in 2022. But for easy math, I would say it's just close to $1 million. That means John doesn't have to pay any capital gain tax when he sells his practice so that he can use that extra money for retirement, future investment, or to create an estate for inheritable purpose. To qualify, only an individual, their relative or partnership must own the business share for at least 24 months before claiming the LCGE. This requirement stops investors from buying and reselling small business share only for tax purpose. Furthermore, a company must be owning at least 50% of its assets in active business corporation inside Canada at the time of sale. In addition, all individuals who apply for an LCGE must be residents of Canada for the entire tax year in which they claim the exemption. So again, talk to your accountant for further details. Alright, those are the 5 strategies I have for you. But wait, I want to throw in one more as bonus, and it's to invest in blue chip stocks for the long term. As we know, if we invest in a non-registered account like not in the RSP or tax rate saving, then we have to pay capital gain tax at profit. But that's a capital loss as well. A capital loss can be used to offset a capital gain tax liability by selling securities in a non-registered account at a loss. If capital loss exceeds capital gains, the lesser of $3,000 of the excess loss or the net capital loss can be deducted from the other income. So let's say you earn $1,000 profit from selling stock A, but lost $1,000 when you sell a different stock, then your profit is effectively zero. The profit and loss cancel each other out in that instance, you won't have to pay any capital gain tax. This is really useful, especially 2022 is a bad year for stock market and 2023 could be the same. So with this strategy, you can rebalance your portfolio and still able to achieve its tax-free status. If this sounds complicated, work with a tax planner and investment advisor can help determine when and how to sell securities to minimize gain and maximize the losses right now. Hey, I hope I've given you some ideas on how you can reduce your taxes. Let me know which strategy you have implemented in the comment below and which one are new for you. Like I said before, 2023 can be a challenging year as well, but I truly think there are lots of good opportunities to grow at too, as long as the right planning. So if you have doubts about your saving plans, have a chat with my team and I, and I wish you a fantastic 2023 and until next time.